Um, so I was trying to, it looks like Cal Poly doesn't have the option to preset the breakout rooms. So I was trying to set them as you came in, but I couldn't keep up. <laughs> so, um, have got like 20 something already in room, so should be a little bit faster. Um, anything, I did, don't have the homework posted yet. I'll have it posted tonight. Is there anything else uh, business business wise that we need to talk about? Um, as a in the usual class, if this was an in person class, after um, maybe two more days of class, maybe three more days of class, that's when I I would have had a midterm in an in person class. So this, it's kind of we're coming to kind of the end of just the basic amplifiers um, and how you put them together and what their characteristics are. And then we'll go on to uh, frequency response. Uh, we're gonna come back to current sources is because we saw the basic current source and we'll see a couple of other circuits that we can use as current sources, uh, but there's a, a couple of very well-known designs. And if you say you took an analog class, they're going to want you to know them. So I, I want to go over them. And what else? And then we start talking about feedback, probably the last week or, or last four days of class or, or so. So this is, um, we're kind of coming up to a, a, a change in direction, a little bit of a change in direction. Um, yeah, I've been trying to figure out, I'd, I'd really like to talk to everybody since it's really hard for me to uh, um, figure out how people are doing on this online thing. So I was hoping to talk to people, but if I do like one person for say 10 minutes, that's we have I have the see in, in the two classes together were sixty something people. So I, I didn't think sitting for ten hours would <laughs> maybe be the best way to do it. Um so I'm still thinking on that. But um yeah. Uh what else? Uh I have no news. Did anybody hear anything about fall? Because I haven't been watching my emails, except if they're from people in my class, really. No news? OK. Uh, so we hopefully, by now, make a survey. OK. Um, can, you, can you send me more information on, on that uh, suggestion? I see. It's, I'll, I'll, uh, something online that people could do. Okay, let me think about that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, hopefully at this point, you're, if somebody says, oh, draw a common source amplifier or a common emitter amplifier or a common gate amplifier or um, common collector. Hopefully you can draw it and hopefully you have some idea of its characteristics. Like does it give you gain? Um, does it have a low R out or a high R out? Things like that. We haven't put them into a table and that's actually, um, I, I, how about this? Can I see, I'm going to see if I can, how many people I can see. Um, uh, those of you that have looked for the looked at the lab this week, how many of you are doing a Darlington pair? Nobody, or nobody's looked at the lab. Okay, uh, you're either doing Darlington pairs or was that was the thumbs up for Darlington pairs? I haven't looked at the lab. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I got a higher response rate for that one than any anything else. Um, 
Okay, so I'm not sure which labs everybody, which labs um, everyone's doing. So I'm not sure what topic to go through, but uh, talking about compound or composite transistors fits in uh, well for if you're doing the Darlington uh, pair lab. So I, I thought I'd do that today. So let me, I'm going to talk for a bit and then, and then ask you some questions. So let's see. Okay, so um, I don't have slides for this, but I made a handout. And what we're going to be talking about is uh, compound transistors. And a compound transistor, uh, a regular transistor looks like this and has a collector, a base, and an emitter. And I drew a circle around. Um, and when you are using a single transistor, you connect it to the other parts of your circuit at either the collector, the base, or the emitter. So there's only three places you can connect uh, another circuit to a single transistor. And for a MOSFET, it's the drain, gate, or source. So um, yeah, if you, if you, we're using this in a circuit. Again, those are, those are the three connections. So a composite or compound transistor, I've heard it called both, um, has the same terminals as a transistor. So if it's taking the place of a BJT, it would have a terminal that uh, looks like the collector, a terminal that looks like the base, and a terminal that looks like the emitter. So it has the same three terminals, but it has some superpower. And it'll be a little clear what a superpower is in a minute. But yeah, so it has the same three terminals. So basically what you could do is you could pull, pull out the regular transistor and throw one of these compound transistors in since it has the same three terminals. It's just like if you go on Digi DigiKey and, and look at one BJT, it has three terminals. You say, wait a minute, no, I want one with a bigger gain. You can pull out that transistor and put in a higher gain transistor or higher GM transistor, whatever it might be. Um, so these are made, so these compound or composite transistors are made so they can just, you can just pull out a regular transistor and throw one of these in. Okay, up there, good. Let's see if I can. Okay. Uh, so, and it's, and they aren't single transistors anymore. And we've already seen one. We saw the cascoded transistor. And the cascoded transistor is two NMOS, two NPNs, two PMOS, or two PNPs. You know, each one of these is considered a, a different cascoded transistor. Um, but if you notice, all three of these have three terminals. And I, I drew that green circle around, like you don't really care what's in there as long as it, you know, has a gate source and drain. And then you can just pull out the MOSFET and throw one of these in. Okay. And if you look at, let's look at the BJT version of a cascoded transistor. If you look at the R in, um, there's no resistor below the emitter. That's, um, you could put a resistor there, but that's a topic I'll, I'll push back to the last page of this handout. Uh, but if this was grounded, then you'd have R pi as your as your R n. So that's that's what that is. Um, we did the math in class for a MOSFET, uh, but if you were on the collector and you changed that voltage and saw how much the current changed, you'd see a resistance of GM of the second transistor. I should have put numbers on here. The, this top transistor times R pi times R o, and the GM is just going to be negative GM if, uh, since when you change the base emitter voltage, um, this transistor decides how much the current changes through your amplifier. So that's the GM of this transistor is um, considered the GM for this entire thing, <laughs> compound transistor. Okay. Uh, to turn this on, you only need a VB on. You only need a VB on be between the base and the emitter because you're basically just turning on this transistor. So that's all you need is a, a VB on. But 
if for a cascoded transistor to work its best, you want both transistors in the forward active region. So for the bottom transistor to be in the forward active region, you need VC sat across the bottom transistor. That puts this node right there at a VC sat. And then if uh, you want this one to be happy too, then you need also a VC sat across this top transistor, which means you need two VC sat from, from the collector to the emitter. And for a single transistor, how much do you need across it? I'll just go ahead and say it then. Um, yeah, for a single transistor, you just need a VC sat across one transistor. So the, the cost is this. And that means you might need a higher supply voltage. Uh, okay, and it's superpower, as, as, we, as we mentioned, is if you look at this collector, it looks like an extremely large resistor. So we saw this one place. Um, if you, when you changed a passive load, a resistive load, to an active load, so you replaced, you had a common emitter with a passive load, so a resistor up top, and you just took out that resistor and replaced it with a, like a PNP or a PMOS, that PMOS or NP, uh, that PMOS or PNP act like a gigantic resistor, so all of a sudden you were getting more gain. This, if you replace that transist, the resistor with, with this, now it's even a big, it looks like even a bigger resistor. So that's a, a useful place for it. Um, and again, the cost is you need VC set across from the collector to the emitter. So you need a higher supply voltage. Okay. So uh, I don't think I, I think since we did this in class, uh, for a MOSFET, what's, what's the RN of a MOSFET? If this was your cascoded compound tr transistor. What is it? What, what, what's that? Wasn't it infinite for RN? Infinite for RN. Okay, and then let's look at some others. What do you think the GM for this entire cascoded transistor is for MOSFET? I don't see anybody raising their hand, but just notice that the VGS for the cascoded transistor is the same as the VGS for this transistor. So it turns out that the transconductance for this whole thing, the big GM for this whole thing, is just the GM of this bottom transistor. So that's where you get this. Um, what voltage do you need to make the MOSFET, the NMOS cascoded transistor? What voltage do you need to turn this on to start it conducting? A VBE on. Uh, that's for, for BJT, so that's a, exactly right for an oh. NPN version. So it's um, v, v, T, the threshold. Exactly. Okay, so this, to, to turn it on, you just need VT. What about how much voltage do you need from the drain to the source to make sure both of these transistors are in the forward active region? Uh, VDS less than VGS minus CT. Mm, okay, so that's the that's the condition if you're looking at a single transistor and seeing whether it's in the forward active region. That's exactly uh, exactly the rule. But what's the voltage across a single transistor to make sure what's the equivalent from uh, say a BJT? What what would it be for a BJT? What's the minimum voltage you can have from the collector to the emitter on a BJT? Uh, VC sat. Okay, and so for a MOSFET, what's its what's its MOSFET version? Uh, BD sat. Yes, B exactly. So, how many VD sats do you need to make sure both of these transistors are in the forward Two. active? Too. So again, you have the same problem. Um, you may need a higher supply voltage. And this time, just because MOSFETs always have an infinite RN. Remember, one of the superpowers when you used it with BJTs is it gave you, whoops, 
I take that back. Sorry, it's a high R out. I'm on the wrong transistors. Okay. Um, yeah, it gives you the higher R out again, but it, it costs you maybe in the supply voltage. So that's an example of a, of a compound transistor. So are there any questions why this is a compound transistor or comp composite transistor or the three terminals or, or anything about why you can't just pull out a regular transistor and replace it with, with a cascoded transistor? It's, it's sitting okay what a composite transistor is? Okay. Um, let me do, let me, I'm going to explain one more and then I'm going to send you to groups to, to figure out if, uh, I guess I should really go through these, but um, I'll try to go through them fast so, so you can have more time to talk about them. Um, the next one, the next compound transistor we're going to look at is a gain boosted transistor and a gain boosted transistor is something that happens in addition to cascoding so you can't gain boost a transistor unless it's cascoded so you can see in here here's two NPN stacked on top of each other so you have the cascoding but then on the input to the top transistor um, you have an amplifier. And I have a video on this too. So if you uh, need to go back and look at this, that's okay. But let's go through a... Okay, so um, when you have a cascoded transistors, I'll, I'll do um, yeah. Since in class we derived the equation for MOSFET, so this is a cascoded transistor, and I'm going to ground the emitter. And for cascoded transistors, if you're taking the place of a uh, of a single transistor, this has to be set to some voltage, and this is your actual V in, and then this will be the drain, the source, and this will be the gate. And this is something that's happening kind of internally that you don't even have to look at. So that's a cascoded transistor. And if you look at the R out for this, so this is the R out, and that's at the drain. So that would be at the drain. Uh, that equals uh, your GM2. So we'll put M2M1. RO1 times RO2. Approximately, because there's a couple of other terms, but they're much smaller, so we got rid of them. Okay. So um, what gain boosting does is it looks at this equation and says, um, I can't do much with RO. Uh, those are you know, just your VA over IC. So if I've picked a particular transistor and I have a particular current, I, I can't change these. But it turns out you can change this GM value and we are changing a GM value but it's in the R out equation so we're actually changing R out we're changing the GM of M2 which in turn increases your R out value so so one last time because this always comes back is that I am changing a GM value but that GM value shows up in the R out equation so we're actually ultimately changing R out, not the GM of the circuit. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in just a single transistor. 
and I'll do V in here. And this voltage, it's just big enough to make sure the transistor is in, in the uh, active region, in the saturation region. Okay, so now if I, and let's say there's a current of I going through here. If I increase this by delta V, what happens here is the current gets turned up. The current gets turned up. So up, up to there it should be good. We're increasing VGS, so the current increases. Okay. Uh, remember that when we do um, small signal analysis, when we do small signal analysis, we're assuming we're in a region where everything's pretty much linearly related. We know that, let's say you look at the, the VGS versus IDS, you, you can see that this isn't, this isn't a line, but if you take a small enough region, you can kind of approximate it as, as a line. So when you say small signal again, you're taking a small enough region that it kind of looks like a line. So all of our math just assumes everything's linearly related. So if that's true, then when I change delta V, delta V, um, delta V times uh, the transconductance of the transistor. Remember, this is I out over V in, and I'm changing V in. So if I multiply uh, V in times I out over V in, I get my I out change. So that should equal delta I. Okay. Not quite sure what happened to the pen, but okay. So this is supposed to be a times right here, not an X. Okay. So let me do, let me do um, something over here. I am going to do give that a gain of AV and I'll just tie this to the source. And again, this node is high enough so this transistor is in the saturation region. And again, I am going to add delta V. Now if if um if I change this, the non-inverting input by delta V, how much does this node change? What do you think? It's a quiet day. Nope. Okay. Okay, go on. Uh, I said delta V. Delta V. Times whatever the gain is. Exactly, so you have delta V times AV. Now remember, if we're in a small enough region here, we know that however much your VGS changes, that's gonna be multiplied by GM. So now the change in voltage at the gate of this transistor is, is not delta V anymore. It's delta V times AV. And then if you multiply that by, try to be consistent, by GM of the transistor, that gives you your, your new delta I. What's the, what's, how, how much, you can see right here, how much difference are these delta I's? So this is circuit one, this is circuit two. How much different are these delta I's? Delta I one, and delta I two. Factor of the gain. A factor of the gain. So if your gate voltage is moving AV times as much, your current's gonna change AV times as much if you're in a linear region. So what you get is your, your actual, if I drew a green box around here again, my, my GM for what's inside this green box right here would be um, delta I, however much 
my current changed over how much I, I changed my input. And over here, if I do the same thing, this I is actually AV times your delta I1 because the gate's moving AV times as much over delta V in. So you can see that by putting an amplifier onto the gate, that you increase your GM by a factor of whatever your amplifier is. Okay. Questions? Okay, so um, back to the original circuit here. If we have a cascoded, uh, it might be a little small, but if we have a cascoded amplifier, we know this is V in, um, and that's actually the mechanism is a little different, so I should go back, but um, we know that the output, the R out at this node is the GM of this transistor times RO1 times RO2. So if you could increase the GM of this transistor, then it increases the, 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 your R out. So if you put an amplifier here, connect it the same way, the minus, the, the inverting terminal goes to the source of your transistor and just put V bias on here. Then your GM for M2 gets multiplied by whatever this gain is. And what's what do you think the new R out is? Uh, the one before, GM2, RO1, RO2, and then times the gain. Exactly. So pretty pretty cool. The the difference between what I did here and what's happening here is this is I moved, I moved the non-inverting input on, on the example over here. I just, I do that because it's easier to explain what's happening. But actually what happens here is v, the non-inverting input is actually a DC value. And, it, and when you change the current through this branch, if you turn up the current, this VGS tries to turn up and actually moves this node down. So over here I took the, non-inverting input and moved it up. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, but here I'm taking the inverting input and moving it down. So you get the same effect as, as, as I described here. And that gives you a gigantic R out. So you had 100K times 100K, maybe divided by 100, times another 100. So it basically cancels out the GM and you just get RO, RO squared for, for your um, are out. Okay, there has, has uh, how about one question? One question. This is probably, I, I've, I think it's one of the, once you, if you see it, then it's okay. But if you don't see it, it's one of the, the harder things to kind of figure out. So one question. Professor? Mm -hmm. So, was the is the whole point of this circuit just so we can increase the R out? Yes. And, okay. And which stage is this for? Like input, output, gain stage? That's exactly what I have on my worksheets for you to think oh, about. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, if you have a high R out, uh, mentioned it last time in lecture, I think. Uh, but where might you like a high R out? Gain stage. Gain stage, absolutely. And is there any place else? Where else do you like something that looks like a large resistor? Uh, the load of an amplifier. Okay, so to increase your gain, so that's that's one. And there's one more place you'd like a big R. Um, current, current source? Exactly, yeah. So in current sources, this is, 
this is awesome. You can change the collector voltage all you want. And this is, this is what a 10 giga ohm resistor. So really the current doesn't change at all. Okay. Um, so that is uh, on the handout. I have NPN version, NMOS version, PNP version, and PMOS version. So the idea of that is okay. Okay, let's go, let's go on. So we've seen two compound transistors. We've seen the cascoded, and then we've seen the gain boosted, which is goes on top of cascoding. So if it's not cascoded, there is no M2. If you don't cascode, you don't have an M2, so you don't have uh, that GM2 doesn't show up in the equation and you have nothing to increase. Okay, let's see. Next one is a Darlington pair. And again, uh, some of you may be doing this in lab this week. So let's look at the Darlington pair. Oops, that's very little. So a Darlington pair, just like, you know, when you had like a common emitter gives you good gain, but it has a high R out, pretty high R in. Um, the common base has a low R in, you know, but good gain. Your common collector has no gain or a gain of one and a low R out. So each one of them has different characteristics. It's the same thing with um, these, um, uh, composite or compound transistors it just so happens that the first two I showed you their superpower is just a high R out and they have the same weaknesses basically but let's look at the Darlington pair this is kind of a, a different flavor now this does something different than increase R out so a Darlington pair Okay, and just for the heck of it, let's let's ground this. Um, this it's still a composite transistor. It's got it's got the three terminals. So if you do this, then you have a collector base emitter, and this is magical because. Uh, let's see what happens to the current. So in a regular transistor, if I put IB in, what would I get out here? IB times beta plus one. IB plus IC, which is IB one plus B. And that's IB plus beta IB, which is IC. Okay, so that's what you get out here. It looks like I, I um, my time predictions are, are off again, so we might not get to play with this um, today. But um, so that comes out of there. This current is now IB times one plus beta. And now it goes into the base of Q2. So IB Q2 equals IB1 plus beta. So now the question is what comes out? This is IE of Q2. What is IE of Q2? Two IB times one plus beta. Okay. Uh, so, how about in terms of IBQ two? You already gave me that equation, so I'll just I'll just steal it. I think it might be exactly what you said, but 
Um, but what's IBQ2? Just that. So you get IB1 times 1 plus beta, that's IBQ2 times 1 plus beta. And you end up with IB1 plus 2 beta IB plus IB, oh, we should keep these IB1 beta squared. Uh, which term do you think dominates? IB1 beta squared. IB1 beta squared. So this, what the Darlington pair gives you is an extra beta worth of current. So if you need, if there's some place where you need a lot of current, this is a, a good circuit um, to use. So this IE right here, this is beta times bigger than if you had a single, a single transistor. Where might you want a lot of current? Um, output stage of amplified. Exactly. Yeah. So the problem with um, uh, sometimes you have two circuits, they work great together, and as soon as you connect them up, they, they fail. And that's because the second circuit is asking for current, and the first circuit can't supply enough current for it. So using a Darlington pair on your output stage um, uh, makes it so your output stage can provide even more current, beta times more current than it did before. Uh, so it's, it's great there. So this right here, you notice the emitters on the bottom, collectors on the top. So this is the NPN version of a Darlington pair. But if you just flip it over, now you have a PNP uh, version of the Darlington pair. And so if somebody, uh, let's see. Um, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that. Since I think we, ju we just have one more. And we're, and again, my time management um, is um, probably won't let you work in groups, so we'll do that next time. Um, but do you remember this circuit? Do you remember that circuit? Nope, not, not from lab. Oh no, so maybe some of you are doing um, <clears throat> this circuit in lab this week. So this is an output stage. Anybody remember the name? Nope, this is called a, a push pull. So if you haven't done it already, I'll post a, a video or something. Um, but really, uh, are you, I'm trying to figure out where labs are, so I, I know what I need to do for the week. But uh, So how many of you have not done this circuit in lab? Um, these were common collect, these were probably common collectors for you in lab. How many of you have? I've done that one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, those were common collectors. Yes. Yeah, before. Uh, okay. Has anybody not seen the circuit in lab yet? Andrew, is that last week? Uh, yes, that was. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Are you in my lab? <laughs> no, I, I have uh, Mike Wilson. Oh, okay, okay, so Wilson's there. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not getting any responses, so I don't know if if this is just a. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, this circuit right here, you, you you need to give it some place for the current to go for these diodes. But um, the whole idea is you have two V beyond between these, and then you have some load to go to 
over two. Okay, um, so this circuit is a push-pull output stage, and it does exactly what a common collector does, except it uses half the power. That's its, its one advantage. Um, but when you start looking at, say, audio circuits, um, um, you see this a lot in audio circuits, you'll see something that looks like, um, sorry, my bad drawing. Very often you see something that looks like this, it'll still have the, down to the, just there. Um, and I'll draw dots here for now. But if you notice this, I took the NPN right here and I replaced it with a Darlington pair. Okay. Can you think of a reason why I put a Darlington pair on top but not on the bottom? Remember, you're still trying, if you're trying to stay, change the voltage at that node, you're, you're charging up a capacitance. It supplies more current to the load without uh, moving it through the second transistor. Yeah, this, this one, if this one's conducting, then this one will be off. But yeah, I like, I like that. So you're charging the capacitor. Why might, why might you have a Darlington pair on top? What's, compare the current that a Darlington pair can give you versus just a single transistor. You can get a lot more current, right? A lot more current. So if you have a Darlington pair on top, it says, oh, wait a minute, when I'm going from low to high, I need a lot of current. But when I'm going from high to low, that's easy to discharge. And I don't need as much current. So often charging something up takes more current than it takes to discharge something. So you see, you see um, I've seen a lot of places where they have the Darlington pair just on top and just a regular transistor on the bottom. Would it hurt to have it on bottom too? Nope, not at all. The one thing is that to turn this on, so that's, that's the good thing. We saw what a, a good thing about Darlington pair is it gives you lots of current, but if you, what voltage do you, you need between the base and the emitter to turn, to make sure both of these are conducting? 1.4. Yeah, you need a VB on to get from the emitter. So this needs to be VB on. So this node is VB on, and then you need another VB on for the second tr transistor to be on. So it's actually two VB on to turn this thing on. And so you actually, your, your V in uh, gets actually, the range of your V in gets shrunk a little bit with the Darlington pair. And you can see here the, the cost is VB on is twice what a single transistor needs. The VC sat is also larger. So you also, you need more voltage across it this direction and more voltage to turn it on in the first place. So, um, yeah, there's absolutely no problem in, in doing it top and bottom. But uh, I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling that all of you like really enjoyed this lab <laughs> or remember push-pull uh, output stages. Okay. Um, for those of you that remember, what's the voltage you have to have between these two, this base and this base? For the push, two VB on. Well, what do you think the voltage has to be between here and here now? You want all of these just right right on that voltage that turns them on. 
So right here, you need, you need one VB on, you need a second VB on, and you need a third VB on. So for this amplifier, I know I'm rushing now, but we'll come back to this then if people feel, don't feel comfortable with the circuit. You actually need three common collectors to shift it down. Okay, I have a feeling I'm losing people here. So on to the last compound transistor. Okay, uh, the last compound transistor is called a Zikli pair. Oh, and you can do, you can make a Darlington pair, a, a faux Darlington pair with a MOSFET, but the way the Darlington pair works is that you're using this current into the base to generate even more current. Um, and for MOSFETs, no current goes into the gate. So you, you kind of you replace, you put a resistor here and this one forces current across this resistor which changes the VGS of M2. So this really isn't a very good circuit. It's not a great circuit. But somebody said, oh, Darlington pairs are great for BJT. So let's try to do that with MOSFETs. Um, but it fails because no current goes into the gate. Hmm. Wow, I really can't tell at all if, if this is making sense to people. So that isn't really a darling pair, the foe, does it work? It, it does, uh, but it's using, it's basically two amplifiers. Um, this moves this node, and so you're, you're basing just changing VGS. And if you have a, a small resistor here, uh, no, you actually want a big resistor. No, you want a small resistor. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand why this is a good deal. <laughs> it's, it, it, you don't have that um, current gain for a MOSFET, and Darlington pairs are based on current gain. So it's, it's kind of a failed attempt to try to imitate BJTs, but it doesn't work really well. So last, last circuit. A uh, Zikli pair. This is NPN version. Um, this also, I'll just go through how the current works here. Current wise, it works the same way as a Darlington pair. Except, remember Darlington pair, what, what was the, the, the base emitter voltage you needed to turn it on for Darlington pair? 2 VB on? 2 VB on. What about this one? What's the base emitter voltage you need here to turn it on? 1 VB on? 1 VB on. So that's the advantage of, of the Zikli pair. And the way this works, remember PNPs, the current comes out, the current comes out of the base. So let's do the same thing. I can do this in one minute. This is IB1. So IB1, if that's going into the base, Let's call this IC1. If IC1, uh, what is IC1? If you know IB1, what is IC1? Beta times IB1. Beta times IB1. And then this, uh, this is the collector of the compound transistor. It's the emitter of Q2. Um, let's just look at the current here just to make it simpler. This is IC2. What's IC2 equal to? Uh, beta times IB2. Beta times IB2. And then you know that IB2 equals your IC1. So what you get is a beta squared 
squared times IB1. So you still get that beta squared, but now to turn on this transistor, you only need a VBE on. And that's, that's your advantage here. Okay, so those are all the compound transistors um, uh, that uh, I'll talk about in this class. Uh, but first two to get a higher R out, second two give you, gives you a big current. Any, any questions on those? Um, I guess we'll, we'll go in and, and do the worksheets on Wednesday. Because uh, I think if you're already doing diff, if you're doing diff pairs this week, then I may have already missed uh, your lab time. Um, and let's see, I'll I'll put up just in case you have diff pairs in lab. Oh, I have the diff pair reading up. So so if you're doing diff pairs this week, there's reading on that. Um, and these these are all videoed and documented up on the on campus. Any questions? So we'll continue with these on, on Wednesday. Okay. Thanks, Professor. All right. <laughs> uh, I just have a question. Um, do you think we could maybe cover push pull uh, in a little bit more detail? Yes. Did you see okay, it? In awesome. Did you see it in lab? Yeah, I have a prod and Ovid. We did it last week, and uh, I didn't quite understand what was going on. OK. Uh, I, I have last week's uh, handout also posted the uh, pre-lab. There's a, a bunch of like one word pre-lab questions that if, if you go through, uh, it might clear it up a little bit. But I'll, I'll also do a video on that then. OK, I'll take a look. Thank you. I have like 20 to-do lists. <laughs> I need to merge them all. Um. The good news is we're one more interview away from being done with our search Zoom recording. So this is the second section. Um, so the handout for today is the one on Canvas. Wherever Canvas went. Ah, okay. I still don't know how to make this a pretty website. It's ah, this one, the summary composite transistors. That's the handout that I'll be um, going off of today. Oh, I see another chat. Oh, did did you, Matthew? Did you still have a question on that? Is your headset better now? Oh, you still have a. So, uh, give me give me one more give me one more day to to think or one more class day. So Wednesday, I'll bring you something. See if it's acceptable to everybody. Because really, you know, before the beginning of class, you should all know how I'm grading you. And that's just, it's kind of unacceptable that it's, that you still don't know. So, but, um, yeah. Okay. All righty. So the handout going off of today is this uh, composite transistors doc. Um, my mouse is officially dead. Let's see, so uh, that document talks about composite transistors. And in this class, we'll talk about um, cascoded transistors, gain boosted transistors, Darlington pairs, and Zikli pairs. So we'll talk about four different kinds of composite transistors. And what a composite transistor is, is it has uh, three terminals, just like a regular transistor. So if you look at a regular transistor, it has, for a BJT, it has a collector, a base emitter. So it has three terminals. A composite transistor can have a whole bunch of gobbledygook inside of it, but it'll still just have three terminals. So for example, the cascoded NPNs here, 
that has a base emitter and a collector. And in theory, with these uh, with these um, cascoded or these composite transistors, you can just pull out your regular transistor and put in one of these uh, composite transistors. So any place a regular transistor can go, a composite transistor should be able to go to. So that's that's one part of their definition. So they have the same terminals as a regular transistor, and they all have a superpower. So um, let's look at, at a cascoded transistor. And we, we did the math for a MOSFET in class. So we'll, let's look at this right, right here. And cascoded transistors, again, it's either an NMOS over an NMOS in series or an NPN and an NPN. Or if you flip those circuits, then you have a PNP and a PNP, or a PMOS and a PMOS. So it has to be two of the same uh, type of transistors um, stacked on top of each other. And when we did the math for, actually, let's use the BJTs, just because that's what came first on the list. So for BJTs, we looked at, we calculated the R out. Actually, that's on to this week's homework, so you haven't done it yet. But we did it for a MOSFET. And um, for the NPNs right here, if you look at the collector and change the voltage and see how much the current changes, you come up with an R out of GM2, R pi R O. And uh, again, the substrip subscripts, I have to look at the homework solutions. So I've for forgotten them again. Um, but the the GM2, this GM2 is the transistor that isn't connected to a, uh, that, that doesn't have, that base is connected to V bias. It's not the base that's connected to the base on the composite transistor. So it's this internal transistor that gives you this GM2. Okay, and then GM of the whole circuit, um, if you change the VGS for a cascoded transistor, it's just like you're changing the VGS of uh, this transistor right here, this bottom transistor. Can you see my mouse okay? Okay, so yeah, if you change the VGS of your cascoded transistor, it's just like changing the VGS of this transistor. So the GM for this whole cascoded transistor is just the GM for this one transistor down here. So that's where you get that. And then the voltage to turn on your cascoded transistor is the voltage to turn on uh, whatever transistor is connected to this base emitter here. So the voltage to turn on this transistor is the same as the voltage to turn on the cascoded transistor. So it's just VB on. Okay. Where this is a little bit different voltage-wise than a single transistor is that if you want both of these transistors to be in the forward active region, then what voltage do you need from uh, what collector emitter voltage do you need to make sure this is in the forward active region? Above VC side. VC sat. So this needs at least a VC sat across it. So this node will be sitting at VC sat. And then how much voltage do you need across this one to make sure it's in the forward active region? Another VC sat. Another VC sat. So what's the voltage from the, the emitter of the compound transistor to the collector of the compound transistor? What's, what's the minimum it can be and still have it, your transistors in the active region? Two VC sat. Two VC sat. So this needs more voltage across it than a single transistor. So if you look at back over here, how this handout's kind of set up is the cost. You need two VC sat, which might mean you need a higher supply voltage. So that's its drawback. And its superpower is that it has a much higher R out than a single transistor. So if you need a high R out, you can cast good. Is that kind of clear, like what a compound transistor is, and um, the that what a, what I mean by a superpower in this case, and uh, by drawbacks? Okay. 
Okay. So um, that's true for all of these. If you flip them for the NPNs, this, this bias transistor is on the top, but when you flip them, the bias transistor is on the bottom. Okay. Do you remember where a high R out is advantageous? In the gain stage. In the gain stage, yes. Um, and then there was a second place. So in the gain stage, remember if you had that passive load, if you made that resistor bigger and bigger, your gain got bigger and bigger. So your R was too big and it just killed your amplifier. So then you re could replace it with a single transistor. That was great that, that the resistance, the perceived resistance went up to RO. Um, but this right here can give you even more. It can give you um, like RO, R pi. Um, do you remember another place that having a big resistance is, is good? I think it was the output stage. Okay, for the R in for the output stage, because you don't want to load your gain stage. So yeah. I agree on R in, but what about for... The input stage. Okay, that's R in again. But yeah, you you want a gigantic R in. If you can get infinite R in, that's that's great. If you have a gigantic resistor and you change the voltage across it, what happens to the current? It only changes a little. Yeah. So if you can make the R out of the circuit I'm thinking of. I feel like a game show was uh, for some reason when I said that. Um, what circuit do you like a high R out for? Maybe like a, an ECL or an echo circuit? Mm, that's like still a... kind of an amplifier. Can you think of a different circuit that we built this quarter that likes high R outs? <laughs> Current mirror. Current mirror, exactly. So a current source, you'd like to be able to change the voltage on the node and you don't want the current to change at all. So in analog circuits, when you say, hey, this has a high R out, that's just shorthand. That's a short way to say, hey, if the voltage changes, I still get a constant current. So any current source that's that's a great place to use one of these two. Okay. All right, so superpower, high R out, drawback, maybe a higher supply voltage. Okay, this second um, compound transistor also has the same superpower. It has a super high R out. It's even higher than a cascoded transistor. So that means, again, like you said, gain stages and current sources. This makes even better gain stages and better current sources. Uh, these, are, these are actually really hard, um, really hard to use in a gain stage sometimes because what you get is you get a, a VTC that looks pretty much like, like this. And you know how in lab, uh, depending who you have for lab, there's, they say, oh, uh, on the output of your gain stages, you common emitter, have it sitting in the middle here. When you have a gain of, uh, you know, like a, a 10 to the ninth or something, uh, you have a, a V in, that will put it here that's like a, a microvolt or something. <laughs> so what you're doing in lab where you're trying to get that V out to sit at some middle voltage, if you have a gain like this with the gain boosted or the cascoded, it has a gain like this, it's almost impossible to do that. And that is actually okay because um, when you hook these circuits up with feedback, it, the feedback magically pushes it into that one microvolt range right there um, for you. Um, 
So, but anyways, so uh, let's so let's look at gain boosting. So gain boosting, uh, you can only do gain boosting. when you have a cascoded transistor already. So gain boosting requires a a cascoded transistor. This is VB. And this would be your drain, your gate, your source. Okay. And um, if you remember the R out here, so if you're making an gain boosted amplifier or you're doing a um, so if you're doing a cascoded amplifier or cascoded current source you know your R out equals that GM2 so this is M2 M1 RO1 times RO2 okay and gain boosting, what gain boosting does is it doesn't change the GM of the circuit. The GM of the circuit is just your big GM is, is just your little GM of your input transistor. So GM isn't changing. What gain boosting does is it changes your R out. It makes your R out even bigger. But if you remember for R01, that's VA over IC. Yeah, you can change IC to, to change the value of RO, but there's not may, very many knobs you can pull that change. Um, and this one's also VA over IC. So it's, it's kind of hard to change your RO values. So the way gain boosting works is it changes the, the little GM, changes the GM of this transistor. And, that, and GM2 only shows up in the R out equation. So if you change the, the transconductance of M2, the GM2, of M2, what you're actually changing is the R out value. And a lot of people um, forget that and say, oh wait, I'm changing a transconductance, so I must be changing the transconductance of the circuit. But no, you're changing a transconductance of, the, of that second transistor, but that transconductance of that second transistor only shows up in the R out equation. Did I say that like 10 times? Is that enough times? Okay. Right, so let's look at how you can change that. Um, see, I can leave this in here. I'm going to take just a regular transistor. Okay, and the the GM of this transistor is when I change V in by some delta V, my output current is going to change by some I. Is that is that big enough? Can you see that? Okay. So um, if you remember, one of the requirements for the small signal analysis math to work is that everything's linearly related. So if you look at a VTC for a transistor, it goes like this. This is obviously not a line right here. It's obviously curved. But if you take a small enough portion of it, then you can say, hey, that's pretty close to a line. So we'll just approximate it as a line. So we, we do that here. And we say, OK, so we had some change in voltage, and that caused a Kind of a, it's kind of a linear relationship with the current. So we can say that this current is proportional to delta V. So the change in I, we can say that's proportional to delta V. And this is V in right here. That's I out. And it turns out that if you take your GM, say M1 here, GM1 times your change in V in, that will equal your change in your I out. Remember that GM is delta I out over delta V in. It's the slope of this line. So if you see how far your V in changes, then you can figure out how much your current changed. Does that sound familiar? Okay. Uh, but yeah, so this I out 
is um, proportional to that. It's not the perceived transconductance. It, 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 is, it is the transconductance of this amplifier. So this GM1 is the transconductance of this amplifier. So I'm going to do something here. This is version 2. And what I'm going to do is... And I have some V in, this is the non-inverting input, and this is the inverting input. And here's my IDS of the second circuit. So we'll call this M2 just to, so I can use a different subscript. And so let's say this amplifier has a gain of AV. Right, so V in, um, if V in moves delta V, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Whoop, that's a lot bigger. If V in moves delta V, how much does this node move? And assume delta V is really small, so it's still in that nice linear region there. How much does that node move? Delta V times AV. Exactly. So this moves AV delta V. And if you're in that nice uh, linear region, then if this moves AV times as much, how much does the current change? So your VGS changes AV times as much. So how much do you think your current changes? AV delta, delta V GM? Yes, exactly. And that's just um, AV times as much current. So if you do the, let me remind myself exactly what I wrote over here. So if you do this same thing, we're looking at the kind of the perceived GM over here. So that GM, oops times your, your delta V, that's going to equal your delta I2. But this, this delta V2 is actually AV times bigger. Uh, now I'm getting it. Now I'm getting kind of messed up here. But do you agree for the same change in delta V here, I'm getting a much larger, larger change in current? Then the GM2, I did this on the video too. The GM2 equals your change in current, which is AV times your delta I. And your VN, your change in VN was your delta V. Whereas over here, your GM1 was your delta I over delta V. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really liking how I'm presenting this, but is um, if GM's defined as I out over V in, and you're getting AV times as much change in I out, is it okay that you say that GM2 is AV times bigger than GM1? Uh, I think I think I should ask for questions because that was not the best presentation ever. Let's see, how about one question? So is GM for the amplifier or GM one? Sorry. Yeah, GM one is for a single transistor. So let's draw a circle around like our our um, our compound transistors, and I am hiding what's happening inside here. I'm, I'm, connect I'm considering that the drain, the source, and the gate. And if I change the voltage at this node, I'm actually going to get, because the voltage to the transistor changes AV times as much, I'm going to get AV times as much change in current. So if I just treat this as uh, just a regular transistor, this looks like 
a transistor with a really big transconductance. If I change V, v in just a little bit, the current changes a lot more than it used to. And over here, I don't think I answered your question. Can you ask that one more time? I, I think I understand. I thought that the GM1 was coming from the little amplifier at the front, but now I realize it's just the single transistor. Yes, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so now the whole idea of this was we're trying to um, trying to figure out how to gain boost a cascoded transistor. So let's draw in the cascoded transistor again. This is M1, M2. And you remember for this, you know that R out is equals GM2, RO1, RO2. Now, um, if we use that same technique to try to increase this, I can put an amplifier uh, on the gate of M2, and now the transconductance of M2 will increase by whatever the gain of this amplifier is. So, uh, and if the transconductance of M2 increases by AV, then your R out also increases. So the original transconductance of just this transistor is GM2. So that's GM of just. For some reason, I did much better in the first hour on this part. OK. Um, so let's see. One more question. Does anybody have a, a question here? I have a question. Okay. Uh, how does the negative feedback loop uh, contribute to the operation of the circuit? Like, why does that have to be there? Um, that right there is um, so. Is the is the explanation up that we just did? If you had a single transistor that looked like this how that increases the current for the same change in voltage in, how that increases the amount of current you see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that case, th these are a little bit different. In, th in this case, this example that I did here, I took this node and I moved it up. Okay, and that increased the difference in the voltage between your inverting, uh, your non-inverting and inverting inputs. Okay, what's happening over here is actually when you turn this voltage up, that increases the current, and M2 says, oh, now I have to conduct more current, so I'm going to lower this voltage by some delta V. I should call that delta Vx. So this M1 turns up the current, M2 says, oh my goodness, I have to conduct more current, and it drops the source voltage a little bit. So for this example, I moved the non-inverting input up, but in actual operation, the inverting input goes down. But it still does the same thing. This changes the, the difference in the inputs the same amount as this does. Uh, so by having the negative uh, input terminal of the op amp go down, mm -hmm. doesn't that make V bias go down as well? V bias is a DC voltage. Yeah, but uh, for an op amp, the two inputs have to have the same voltage, right? Only if you have infinite gain. Okay. So in uh, actual operation, 
if you have v uh, plus and v minus and a gain of av, your v out, your v out actually equals av times the difference of your two inputs. Uh, the the reason why you assumed the two voltages were the same because was because that if you have infinite gain, like an ideal op amp, then even if they're just a little bit off, anything times infinity gives you infinite V out and nothing would work. <laughs> so to make the assumption that gain is infinite for an ideal op amp, you just say, oh, keep the, vol the voltages are about the same. And if you have a, a large gain amplifier, they will they will stay near each other. Thank you. All right. So gain boosting. Let's go back to the handout here. Um, same R in as a single transistor, but your R out goes up. But it also more than the, just the plain old cascoded, it gets multiplied by whatever gain um, your gain boosting amplifier uh, provides. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Um, GM's the same. It's because it's a single transistor, so that this transistor changes the current through your amplifier. Um, to turn on the transistor or turn on your compound transistor, notice that the base and the emitter are going to this bottom transistor. So whatever turns on this bottom transistor is also going to turn on your compound transistor. So it's still VB on. It has the same problem with VC sat. Both transistors have to be in the forward active region, so you have to go up one VC sat and then another VC sat. And it's usually more, but uh, actually you can get you can cheat it. Yeah, so that's its drawback. So what's its superpower? And even higher R out than a cascoded. Yeah, and what's its weakness? You need two VC sat drops. To yeah, so you need two. You may have to have a higher supply voltage. Okay, so two down, two to go. So uh, next one is the Darlington pair, and it's different. The first two you saw increase R out. The next two, the next two compound transistors, we'll see um, increase the current. So let's look at that. Let's do a Darlington pair. Kind of drew that badly. And this is the collector emitter base. I'll try to clean that up just a little. Sorry, I drew that transistor a little bit too low. Um, this is a Darlington pair. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot to do something on the last class. That's okay. Um, so the way a Darlington pair works, let's say you have IB, let's call this Q1 and Q2. So that's IB1. So my first question is, what's what's I E one? So what's the current coming out of the emitter of Q one? If you know that the base current is I B one. So what's the emitter current? Is it beta IB 
or, or beta plus one IV? Yes. Uh, well, it's it's one mm, kind of. If you if you notice the the units wouldn't uh, match there. The one plus IB. So that's always a great quick sanity check. But uh, IE is IC plus IB. And then how do you get a beta in there? I see is beta IB. Yes. So you can do IB1, 1 plus beta. Okay. Um, okay. So that's IE1. Now IE1, if you notice, there's no place for IE1 to go except into the base of Q2. So IB2 equals IE1. So now my question is, what is IE2? And this, this kind of helps out. Is it IE2? Uh or excuse me, IE1 times 1 plus beta? Exactly. So that's the base current in. That's 1 plus beta. And then you know that IE1 equals this whole thing. So what you end up with is, now remember, this is a compound transistor. So you just looking at it, you think, oh, this is just a regular transistor with three terminals. But now when you look at the current that you see, IB1 times 1 plus beta squared. And if you multiply that out, you get an IB1, which is very small, plus 2 IB1 beta, which is much bigger. And then you get IB1 beta squared, which is way bigger. So which one dominates? Beta squared term. Beta squared term. So what's, uh, what's neat about the Darlington pair is that it gives you beta times as much current as a single transistor would. So um, where you had a transistor that conducted a certain amount of current, now, now you get quite a bit more current out. So that's its superpower. It can provide way more current than just a single transistor can. Uh, where is that, where is that useful? On the output stage? On the output stage. Remember, you probably see this if you build circuits in other classes. If you have two circuits that work great and then you connect them together and they, they fail, it's because the second circuit is asking for current and it's pulling so much current off the first stage that it's, it's making the first stage not operate correctly anymore. So if you put an output stage that can provide lots of current, then you can connect it up with almost anything and it'll still, still work well. Uh, let's can, you, can you put more than two transistors in the Darlington pair to get potentially <laughs> more? <current? laughs> I've never seen it done, but that sounds crazy. That sounds awesome. Yeah, like beta cubed. Yeah, something like that. That's kind of cool. That you have to you have to name that now. It has to be the the Hank, the Hank, Hank triple or something. If you get there first, you get to name it. Okay, so let's let's look at this. Uh, I think that m many of you have already seen this. In lab, you should have done this circuit. Uh, I'll just put dot, dot, dot here. Do you remember this, this circuit? Remember what it's called? Nope. In, inver, inverting, PGT inverter? It's got 
it's got the NPN on top and the PNP on the bottom. So that's, it would be if it was flip. A uh, push pull. Push pull. So this is a push pull output stage. And it's, uh, it um, gives, gives you actually slightly worse R out than a uh, common collector, just very slightly, um, but it uses half the power. So it uses half the power of CC, but they're both great output stages. Okay, so um, if you look on uh, audio pages, and I, I'm partially lying because a lot of the audio output stages uses the next compound transistor that I'll show you, but uh, there's, you'll see, often you'll see something like this. And I'll do dot, dot, dot again. So what do you, what do you think's happening here? You get the same amount of current, but with the low R out as well. So, um, what? Uh, tell me, tell me the difference between this version of the push pull and this version of the push pull. The second one has a Darlington pair. Second one has a Darlington pair. So, just just like. With all these compound transistors, you can just pull out a single transistor and throw in one of these compound transistors. It has the same terminal, so it should, should fit right in there. Okay, so that's, that's what happened. And then, why, why might you do this? Just apply more current. Apply more current, but it's only on the top. Why might you only have Darlington pair on the top and not on the top and bottom? Because on the top, some of the current is going to the output, so okay. it's not all going to the bottom resistor or transistor. Okay. Actually, with the push pull, if the top is on, the bottom's off, and if the bottom's on, the the top's off. So, but but you're right. It's it's all going out the output. Doesn't it help, like? Um make it so that you don't have to wait until VBE on to turn that transistor on. This actually, um, running out of time, but this, if you remember the biasing for your, for this version of the push pull, you needed two VBE on, you needed, two VB on between the two bases for this to work well. This one, you actually need three VB on. It's a little different than what you were saying, but this, you actually need three, three VB on. Why is that? You have to overcome all three of those transistors now. Yes, because the, uh, we haven't, we didn't mention it, but the, the VB on for a Darlington pair, both of those have to be on. So it needs one VB on just to get this transistor on, and then it needs a second VB on to get that transistor on. So actually the, the voltage to turn on a Darlington pair is, is twice that of a, of a single transistor. And that's, it, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. It, it, doesn't like, it doesn't like act like a rectifier or something, does it? No. Um, this right here, I'll, I'll, just because we have one more circuit to do that we can do really fast, but often it's harder to pull up a node than pull it down. So discharging a node, going from high to low, is often faster than going from low to high. And having extra current to bring a, a voltage from low to high speeds up that that low to high transition. So if the low to high transition is slow, but the high to low transition is fast, then just put something with more current on the top, and then that'll speed up the low to high transition. Does that make sense? OK. 
Okay. Um, I, there's one more thing. I'll, I'll make sure to do it next, next lecture. But so Darlington pair, the big cost is your VBE on. So for a Darlington pair, your VBE on is twice that of a average transistor of, of a, a single transistor, I should say. Okay. And people didn't like that. So they came up with, and it, it, there's no such thing as really a Darlington pair. Since Darlington pair works off of a base current and MOSFETs don't have a base current, people have tried to fake Darlington pair in MOSFETs, but it really doesn't work well. Um, but let's look at the last circuit. So this circuit right here, it has one NPN, one PNP. It's called a Zikli pair. Just ignore the S. Um, and what's, what voltage do you need to turn this transistor on, this compound transistor on? Just VBE on? Yes. So this one has an advantage there. Um, I have two minutes. We can do this. So for the Zikli pair, I got really little. For the Zikli pair, let's do the same thing. Let's look at IB. Okay. So then, um, if you remember, current comes out of a PNP base goes into an NPN base, but goes out of a PNP base. So this is, this is actually the IB for the PNP for Q2. So if you have IB1, what is IB2? So how, what's the relationship between IB1 and IB2? Is it the IC equation? Exactly. Because So IB2 is actually IC1. So what's the relationship between IB1 and IB2? IB2 is equal to beta IB1. Okay. So now, uh, just to make it a little bit easier since I'm already at time, this is IC2. What's IC2 equal? IB1 beta times 1 plus beta? IB, if this is the collector. Or IB2, excuse me. IB2 times beta, since this is the collector down below here. But if you replace that all in, you get IB1 times beta squared. So you still get your beta squared. Since it's a PNP, the collector current is coming out the bottom. So you get, still get your beta squared, but now you only need VB on to turn this thing on. Okay. So those are the, the four. Uh, on the handout, I, I, I kind of fudged. I, I put in a, a degenerated transistor, but really you can add degeneration to any one of these. Since you're treating it as a, just a regular transistor, you can, below the emitter of any of these compound transistors, you can throw in a resistor. So a degeneration transistor is really not a, a, ca a compound transistor, but I threw it in there anyway. Um, but yeah, so those four are the ones that we're ta we'll talk about in this class. Does anybody know what lab you're doing? You can, you can. I know it's at past time, so if you need to go, that's fine. But does anybody know what lab you're doing this week? Is it the Darlington pair one or is it the diff pair one? I think mine's the Darlington pair one. I, uh, okay. I haven't looked. Okay. I've never liked that lab, so I'm going straight to the diff pair one. My, my section.
Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Professor. <laughs> bye. Bye. Raul. Oh, are you still yeah. there? Oh, I was listening yeah. to your music this morning. Oh. Like I'm angel, glad. angel baby. <laughs> oh, I hope that's because you like it. <laughs> it's those. It, yeah, it's kind of. It's kind of like, uh, I can't think of the English word. Shoot, I've been spending too much time in Japanese. Uh, but it's not, yeah, it's fun. It's jolly. It's jolly. Oh, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> All right, bye, Professor. All right, bye-bye.